Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Wednesday, November the 2nd, race number seven at Delaware Park. Our coverage is presented by DRF Bets. This is a first level allowance with a $16,000 claiming option, six furlongs, three and up. Let's take a look at this field. Please scan the QR code for race of the day access on your mobile. Your morning line favorite is the seven, my man Vito. And I guess the distance is the biggest question for my man Vito. Look good last time out going two turns, cuts all the way back to six furlongs here. Yeah, they're gonna cut him back to sprint. Uh, they haven't really done that much sprinting with him recently, Dan. Both of his wins uh, going the, the two turn mile here at Delaware. Um, but he does seem like he has enough speed to handle this this shorter distance. Speaking of speed, the gas looks like it's going to come from the inside post. We'll throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. Penetrator, the number one, uh, does have that sort of early speed. 11-time winner, Kate's Golden Dude, the number three, is uh, a horse that can get close to the pace as well. And the four, it's sizzling time. I'm familiar with this one from Laurel. He has excellent tactical speed as well. I think Penetrator, with an aggressive ride, can get to the front. And I think this pace will be moderate. It'll be interesting to see what everyone does here. I do agree with the, the pace projector that Penetrator is fast enough to make the lead from the rail. There are a couple of horses to his outside, though, who, if they decided to, they could probably go with him. Let's talk a little bit about the number one Penetrator, a horse that has been successful utilizing the turf to dirt move in the past for trainer Jerry Hollendorfer. And Mike, can you make the uh, case that this horse is a little bit dirtied up? He ran on turf last time. That's likely not his surface. The race before that, he caught a sloppy track. Uh, the time before that, he ran two turns. Uh, you go back to his race four starts back. He was in against Little Vic, who, who's had some moments earlier this year. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, all three of his, his three most recent races, there are reasons to be skeptical of those performances just because it felt like maybe things were working against him. And I think you're also just dealing with just on, you know, cold dope. Dan. This is a horse that dropped once off of that layoff in February, one for fun that day. And every start since then, non-winner won, you know, just against way better horses. And then, you know, of course, the slop in the turf recently, Hollendorfer, giant stats going turf to dirt with sprinters. Uh, there's a lot to like about this horse. The number two, Singlino, is 15 to 1 on the morning line. This horse easily exceeded the 80 buyer par for this class level during the summer of 2021. He was in very good form at that point in time. Whether he's in that same sort of form is debatable right now. He's going to be making his second start off of a substantial layoff, however. He didn't do much running in his first start back, but he didn't have a great trip either. Yeah, he didn't. Um, but boy, his his form has to be at least some concern um, because he got that layoff after three pretty dismal performances um, in his first three starts of the year. Then they stopped on him. They came back. He didn't run well again, um, although the trip wasn't a great one. I mean, he's got that three race run there from last summer that would you know just make him really tough in here. But the races surrounding that don't do a lot for me. Kate's Golden Dude exceeded the buyer par with an 82, three starts back at Monmouth, a pace pressing winner of a $16,000 condition claimer, went back to Parks, his home base in his last two starts, and just didn't seem to have that finish for the quarter beaten. Uh, I wonder if this is a lateral step up in class, maybe a little bit of class relief. She, he has it in him to win races, obviously. He's won 11 in a row, and he has the right, he has won 11 in his career, and he has the right running style. Yeah, all those things are true. He's just, he's not that reliable. Um, he, you know, he'll follow up good performances with really bad ones. Um, but he's got more than one performance on his card that would make him super tough in here when he's got a little speed. It's sizzling time. The number four made his Delaware debut in his most recent start 11 days ago. He ran just fine. Let's watch that effort. First level allowance going five and a half furlongs. It's sizzling time stalked in second. He's going to battle all the way down to the wire. He earns a career best buyer speed figure of 78. I never thought of him as the most reliable type when he was running in Laurel, but he does have good speed and it appears he's back to his best form. His form is, is pretty solid, a recent run of races that are all, you know, pretty good. He's not turning up in the winner's circle all that often, but uh, he's showing up and running his race. And you like to see that um, with horses at this level, to be sure. Um, I thought that there were, you know, probably one or two in here that if they showed up uh, with their good race, they're probably better than it's sizzling time. But um, this is a horse that you can rely on.
Trust Your Instinct is up next for trainer Gary Contest, and I think it's really all a question of whether this horse class is up. There are lots of seconds and thirds on his record, but he's figured out how to win recently. He's won two of his last four starts, albeit both of those races in lower-level claiming events. He won on the lead two starts back for a scant nickel beaten. They ran him in an allowance race last time out, and he ran better than expected, a good third. Yeah, he was behind Sizzling Time that day. Um, you know, I would kind of rather have that horse um, in this spot, but this horse will will probably be the better price. Then this horse just looked a little cheap to me. Swing West, the number six, has some value on the morning line at 10 to 1. He's coming up a runner-up effort in a starter optional claimer at Delaware. They cut him back to six furlongs. He caught a muddy track that he appreciates, and he's in with a chance turning into the stretch. He just can't run with the winner at the final furlong. Uh, 18 of 37 in the exacta in his career. You go back three starts, sprinting on a fast track. He ran okay. Yeah, he probably needs his absolute best to come out on top here. But I thought he was an interesting sort of longer price to try to get in there somewhere, Dan. He has some races earlier this year that I think would give him a real chance in this race. He got it onto that three race winning streak over the winter. And I just anytime I see a horse that can cut back from a mile all the way to five and a half um, and still win, I think that's an underrated performance for this horse. Um, and he just tends to show up every single time. We'll see if my man Vito can turn all the way back to six furlongs and win. He's done his best running around two turns this spring and into the summer at Delaware Park. Let's watch his most recent start. This is a starter allowance race on October the 19th, and he got up close to the pace. He was very confidently handled, took over the lead outside the quarter pole. And as you see, he goes about his business. He earns a respectable 77. He's now buyer uh, 77, his top in his last two races. Uh, he does appear, as Mike mentioned in the open, have the tactical speed to stay relatively close. I wonder if the only reason they're turning him back is the season is ending. He's sharp. You want to run him one more time at Delaware. Yeah, probably get another start out of him because he is in good form right now. Um, you know, and even though the last time or the only time that they that they won with him sprinting was going seven, um, I like that he did that from off the pace. Um, I do think they're probably going to get aggressive with here, with here, Dan. Don't you? Don't you think they're going to try to use this horse's speed? I think they have to because uh, turning back in distance, there's a chance that they don't use his speed, that he could be out sprinted early and have a little bit more to do than he has had in his last couple of races. Uh, I think he fits, obviously, from a speed figure standpoint. It's all about whether the distance is too sharp. Poulterer last time out ran in a first level allowance race at Laurel way back on November the 18th, 2021. The pace was very fast that day. He tired very badly. This is a long layoff to overcome. Um, I wonder if this is just a start off point. This horse might be more effective at longer distances. Yeah, he I, he was the horse that I'll, I'm happy to give this race to him and see what happens. But he is very lightly raced, Dan, and I liked his win two starts back. Band on tour classes up very nicely with these horses. Gary Capuano had him actually go through his second level allowance condition during the summer of 2021, and then he beat even tougher allowance horses over a muddy track in his subsequent start. After a disappointing effort in the Maryland Million Sprint, he disappeared. He came back. He was claimed by Jamie Nassen. You usually see Jamie move these horses up. This horse did not move up in his first start back. He's taking a big drop in class. Yeah, that, I think it's a bad sign um, that they claimed this horse in his first start back from a really long layoff, ran him. He did not run well at all. Now that he's right in for 16, Dan, I, don't, to me, those are bad signs. But this horse obviously has races. If he somehow shows up with his good race here, he's going to be tough. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for all the latest DRF TV video opportunities. Breeders' Cup right around the corner will be a busy week on DRF TV. Top pick time for the Wednesday race of the day. Mike, you're going with speed, you're going with the rail, you're going with the turf to dirt move, which has worked in the past for Penetrator. Uh, he could be very tough to catch with an alert break. Yeah, maybe more than anything else. I mean, I do like the, the surface switch and I like that he's third off the layoff here, but more than anything else, then I just think it's a, a great spot for this horse. All of his prior dirt races have come against a, horses that are a lot better than these. 
am concerned about the distance for my man Vito. Liked the way he polished off that field going two turns last time out. Think he has enough tactical speed to sit close. It's sizzling time. I know has enough speed to stay close and should be in the thick of things turning for home. 1697 for Mike, 7456 for me. It's your Wednesday race of the day, the 7th at Delaware, presented by DRF Bets.